Hi guys, you're here with Little Barry once again, and I want to introduce you to one of the greatest families we've had the privilege of spending a few days with. And without any more delay, I want to just start off with general questions about, um, and because for some of them it was their first time out of the country. And in your own words, briefly say, what did you feel about spending a few days in Cabrera? And I know you're moving on to other parts of the country, which is great. And just maybe kind of pigeonhole it, dovetail it into what do you think was the highlights and the low parts and everything about spending time for you? I'll let you guys start it on your own, whoever goes first. Go ahead. Well, I think for me, um, one of the biggest things that I enjoyed was definitely meeting all of the people. Um, I think that was definitely something that we were looking forward to. And we were not disappointed at all. Everybody just has the sense of community and you're treated as a friend rather than a stranger. And that's something that's special that you don't see in places like America because everyone is so wrapped up in their own world that they just don't even think about the people around them. You guys, any thoughts on that in terms of, uh, I know you've, you've mentioned many times it's exceeded expectations and I think you said they were already the bar was raised pretty high to begin with. I've done a lot of research before we did this trip. Um, I've watched every video, and I watched every video with a lot of skepticism. Uh, is Barry really the guy that, uh, you know, he says he is? Is this country really as beautiful as described? Uh, is Cabrera really uh, an unspoiled paradise? Uh, and I was going into this half expecting that a lot of those expectations were set pretty high. Um, but I, I can honestly say all of those expectations have been exceeded. Um, this is a place I could not even tell you. The, the pictures and the videos that Barry does, I mean, as well as he does them, they don't do it justice. You have to see it for yourself. Uh, the people, they are that friendly. They really are. We've met some great friends, just people just randomly um, that have just been a blessing to us. Uh, and we just have really enjoyed our time here. You, know, you met one of, uh, one of my local friends, Jose, and you felt really comfortable in his place. We were sitting in the gazebo. As a mother of two, how would you answer that question? Um, I was nervous about bringing our teenage daughters here um, because of what I heard um, online and had read, um, that we should be wary and we should not wear jewelry and we should be looking out for their safety all the time, um, but none of those things have been true. I mean, it's kind of been the opposite, at least here in Cabrera. It's the only place we've really been yet. Um, but the people here in this town are welcoming and friendly, and they say hello with a warm smile. Um, and any effort you make to speak their language or communicate is reciprocated and welcome. And, um, yeah, I haven't feared for their safety or my safety or anything like that. It's, yeah, it's a big country and I, I always point out in my videos too, it's like uh, where I'm from, Canada's huge uh, geographic size, or even America's quite a bit smaller geographically, but there are good places and there are bad places. And if you go down a street or you're in an area and you look down a street and you don't like what it looks like, well then wouldn't common sense say just don't go down there? Exactly. And, and, you know, but as, as uh, two young ladies, that, um, how did you feel in terms of your safety or in terms of your acceptance in, in our little region so far? And I know you're traveling to Abacoa, is it uh, Las Terenas? Mm -hmm. And they're going to the lands, the Las Terenas and Abacoa. But so far to start off your first leg, how did you feel as two young women that you know, I mean, were you afraid? Did you feel threatened? Did you feel people are really like um, missing it from me? Or was it the opposite? Well, the people, the people here are just incredibly nice, and like a lot, I love just one of my favorite parts of being here, just going around and driving around and seeing all the people in the country, just sitting out, um, sitting outside, never just chatting with each other, and I'll just. When we just when we go by, I'll just wave to them and I'll just give them a smile and they'll just smile back and it's such a unique experience um, to just have that to just be able to just wave at people and just have a good time with them and no one he, like I have I've barely seen any people here on their phones or just in their own little world. Everyone here is, like has such a big sense of community and it's so unique here. Everything is. It's not because it's not controlled. There's so many, there's so much freedom and 
everyone has like their own ways of expressing themselves and showing that off through like buildings and the food here and just everything that they do. As a young woman, would you feel it'd be hard, this goes to both of you, it's an important question for other people of similar age, and we're not giving out ages, but um, would you find it to be hard to gel into this community with other people if you did live here, or would you find it be quite easy to gel into the community and become part of it? Honestly, I don't think it would be very difficult because, um, like Hannah and I have both said, you're treated as a friend rather than a stranger. It's like they act as if you've known them your entire life. And so I think it would be um, very welcoming to be able to communicate with these people. And I think the only barrier would be the language, but that's something that we could learn and pick up. And I'm excited to try to learn more of the language so that I can connect with these people. Right. Then, Time out. This isn't fair because they're both very optimistic, okay? So they can do anything, these two. So I realize... Uh, that's, you know, but, but, but you continue on that because I do want to ask you another question after that. Well, we, um, we've also met many foreigners here. Um, many of like Barry's friends who are also have had the same experiences as us that have, um, met these people and just been extremely like wowed by how kind they are and like, even, even if they don't know English, like, they will still try to communicate with you as best as they can, and they will, they'll try to really, like, like, many people will treat you as a friend. They're very patient. Yeah, yeah. they are very patient. Yeah, that comes of uh, your sales reacting. We talked about this privately to the environment they're placed in. If you're not under 24 hour stress, you, you have time to, mm -hmm. to look at things differently. Um, but the other thing is about, uh, Maybe sometimes it's it's not a problem, but it's an opportunity to learn the language. And I think particularly for younger folks, if you're not bi or trilingual, the future is not looking very positive for professional careers and being able to be employed in various countries. And we've talked a lot over dinners and stuff, which is another thing. They, they just don't like the food here. There's going to have to be an adjustment for that. Would you care to make any kind of comments about our diet and why we don't take medicines and pills so much? I, I have to start. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite topics. Uh, <laughs> I was looking forward to the seafood. We don't get seafood uh, back home, and uh, I was looking for some of the fresh experience with the seafood. So I was really looking forward to that part of it. But what has surprised me is steaks, pork. Everything that we've ever ha ever tried here has been the best. Every time we eat just a chicken, rotisserie chicken off the side of the road, um, for you know four dollars is the best chicken we've ever had. Uh, every meal it seems to supersede the last meal, mm -hmm. and we've traveled. I've I've been in some very nice restaurants in New York and California and uh, Chicago, and so far I will take this food hands down over anything I've ever had. You At a fraction agree. of the price. You, yeah. you, you guys agree with that too? I mean, you had no problem with uh, selection and, your, and enjoying what you ordered? It was. I know last night was pretty incredible at that little farm restaurant, uh, that little barn restaurant, but aside from that one, the others were good, the fish was good, and you had no trouble adjusting to that? Definitely. I loved that we all could order different things and just try all these different foods because even if it's a food that we've had before, I would think, oh, I've already had that, but you haven't if you haven't had it here because all the ingredients are fresh and it's made home cooked and it's just everything tastes so good because it has all the nutrients and the flavor that just doesn't come with the processing in America. Well, everyone's very chill here. Everything's like homemade and they'll, they'll just, some people don't even have menus, they'll just come up to you and tell you what they have and then other people will have like many, like six page menus with like several different like versions of the same thing, but we will get like the same thing, with just like a slight variation, they'll taste like completely different. Do you taste the, the difference in the quality between 
what is packaged and what is does it bring back memories of the old days? Yeah, I can't explain. It. Well, I was just going to mention um, last night we had, some of us had steak on our plate for the first time. We tried the beef here, and it's all grass fed, from what I've been told and believe, because the steak just melted in our mouth. It was the best we've ever had. It was fresh. It was juicy. Um, we we cleaned our plate. <laughs> and we're, we're actually uh, <laughs> forgive me, but if I'm not mistaken, because I visited where you live, and we don't need to mention where, but that's that's part of near the dairy country. Of, or, I mean, yeah, we do not have a problem with getting good steaks, yeah. good quality steaks, and we pride ourselves on steaks we make ourselves. Mm -hmm. But um, there's something about the meat here that is a quality. Mm -hmm. uh, even the chicken, mm -hmm. I, it, I, you know, we can get rotisserie chicken. That, you know, Walmart for, you know, a couple bucks and it's it's fine, but it just doesn't compare. The chicken here tastes better. Well, on a, on a party note, a shot across the bow, so to speak, what, what just not your advice, but give us a few parting words from a young perspective and a middle-aged perspective on people that may want to come out to this country or other countries, I never push only this country, and uh, maybe come out and pay a visit, whatever, and consider uh, exiting some of the problems in their home nation. You don't really need to go into that. Uh, their self, if you can't see it by now, their delusion is an issue. And uh, what, what can you maybe give a little suggestion to somebody that might be a little bit timid? Because I know it was your first time out of the nation. And that, that to me, is, I think, the first time uh, out of over 700 trips I've, I've ever met uh, two people that it was their first time away from their home nation. So even for me, that was a special thing. Well, I think really just one thing that I've told my friends already is that I've learned more in this not even a week than I've learned all year at school because there's something about being in the place and in the experience that just you can't recreate, you can't learn from a textbook. And um, I think I would tell people to step out of your comfort zone because it is something scary and it's something that you might not be familiar with. But the best moments and the most exciting moments in my whole life have been from when I stepped outside of that comfort zone and have taken risks. Because otherwise, you're never going to try new things and you're never going to grow as a person. Can you add anything to that from a young perspective? Well, so like my sister said, it's a huge learning experience and um, a lot. It's, I learned so much from just... Um, from just have, being in a different country and seeing how people live here, because it's, it's a completely different experience with how things are run here and with how free people can be here because they don't have as many laws as we have in America. And so that many, many people think that of that as like a bad thing or a scary thing that people don't have as many laws, but the people here, like, they live the way that they do and like, they, um, they, uh, it's hard to explain. They have such a big sense of, like, community and everyone just, you, you pick it up fast because it's, like, sometimes it is a little chaotic here, but it's, it's definitely a big sense of, like, chaotic freedom because everyone here is just the way that people, like, to me, how people should be. And just, like, it's very natural, very, like, Intuitive to me. Mm. Excellent. Organized chaos. <laughs> <laughs> well, not organized chaos because I feel like in the cities of America, especially, it is very organized, very controlled, and everything like all the streets, you're all going one way, and everyone's there's so many rules that go into it. Um, but here, like, you don't, because you don't have many rules, like, it is a lot more natural. You can obviously tell they've been driving around with Old Barry for a few days. Uh, I've been uh, I've been mentioned that many times before about driving, but that's that's just how it goes here. Mm -hmm. uh, after you you maybe make a suggest or a suggestion or two about that, as I would like one final answer from both of you uh, before I cut off. Uh, so go ahead with your suggestions, but then I also want you to add in about as parents of two teenage daughters. Would you consider relocation to a place like this? And that would say a lot. Okay. Well, our goal uh, coming here was to discover if this was a place to be, to live uh, long term. 
and not, not just part term, not just as a vacation destination. And that's really what we want to take away from this trip. And we, we're, we're only halfway through it. Is this a good place to visit uh, or is this a good place to live? Uh, and we're all trying to figure that out together. Uh, my main goal is uh, to provide a refuge uh, for family uh, to visit and to stay with us and to be a part of our future, um, not just uh, an escape plan. It's not just a plan B, although I think it could be. Uh, it's really, can we make this a true destination uh, for our future? Was there any last bit of uh, maybe suggestion about people stuck on the fence post because as parents afraid to pick up with children and is there is there anything you can add to that i mean what would you tell these people that oh my god you're, you know you're crazy but they've never been to a country like this so we, we've never done anything quite uh like this and we we flew into uh to Punta and drove across the country uh, to Cabrera. Um, and it was a long drive, and I'm not sure I would recommend that for everybody, uh, but we were glad we did it. Uh, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed the the trip as much as the destination, and we had a lot of fun doing it, and we never felt unsafe. Uh, we were wondering if this is the time, maybe we should wait until, you know, the world calms down. We just decided it's, there's no sense in waiting. Actually, the cost of waiting is greater than we just did it. And actually, from the rudder of the ship, the most important answer as a mom. Um, well, I guess my thoughts are more on just <clears throat> if we would have never brought our family here or anywhere else to check out, um, we would have never learned. Just simple things like, I think that somebody told me there's like 10 kinds of mangoes or something. So there's, there's so much more than what we knew about and... Uh, if we would have just stayed in our safe little corner of the world, uh, which, you know, safe is relative, but we would have never discovered all the things we've learned here, and we've just, we've, we're beginning to learn, because we, we haven't learned that much, but with what we've learned, we just want to be more open, we want to learn more. It's just the starting point for for the future, and our daughters are really excited about it, too. They just appreciate you know, being able to do this with us, and, and we feel the same way. Well, guys, I um, I want to just take a moment to honestly say, uh, Leanne and I have thoroughly enjoyed ourselves, and we really you brought a lot of knowledge and perspective into my life, and I'm a deep thinker, and sometimes I do lose people with that, but you have given me a great gift of um, actually catching me up a little bit as to what's happening in other nations, and the greatest gift someone can give you is time. So I, I want to sincerely thank you for the actually 40 minutes because no <laughs> professional photographer forgot to put on the microphone for the first one. But I do want to uh, thank you very much for, for taking the time, especially the young folks. And until next time, it's Barry and VR. We'll talk to you soon.